Welcome to Tech Photo Vlog. This is episode number 66. This week I'm going to be talking about the Multi Flash Plus. Now I've talked about this in the past and I was talking about how you could uh, use this device plus a camera axe to trigger more cameras and flashes with the camera axe. And that's still the most common use case for this device today. However, a number of people have been coming to me with use cases where they don't need the camera axe. They just want to trigger this device with a button to do, you know, stereo type shots where you want to trigger two cameras at once, or they want to <clears throat> maybe do one of those bullet time effects where you have a whole bunch of cameras sort of circling the thing you're photographing and you can take all of those photos at the same time and then in post-production uh, sort of create a video that swings around a frozen uh, object. Um, I've had people ask me about using this to trigger uh, multiple cameras for uh, 3D imaging type effects. And, and then sort of the last guy who was working with me, he just wanted really precise control over all of his cameras and flashes that he had plugged into this. And again, he just wanted to push a button to trigger this. He didn't want to go through the camera axe. So, uh, for this use case, what we ended up uh, coming up with was you can just get these really cheap remotes off of eBay, uh, you know, for 4 or $5 that will trigger your camera. Uh, this is a little bit more expensive one. This one has an intervalometer, which is not used here. So you can go with a cheaper one um, if you want. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, this one was maybe $12 or something, so it's still really inexpensive. So I just got the one with the intervalometer in case that came in useful some other day for a different project. But uh, the idea is that if you get the one for the Canon Rebel, it will have a little 2.5 millimeter jack, um, which is great for triggering that camera, but the Camera Axe and the Multi Flash Plus all work on 3.5 millimeter jacks. So what you need is you need this little uh, converter that goes from 2.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter stereo jacks. Again, you can get these in, you know across the internet, really inexpensive converter. You plug them together like this, and now you can plug this um, plug directly into the multi-flash input, like so. And now you're able to simply trigger the multi-flash with this remote. So it's, it's just that simple. Uh, for all of these use cases where people just want to trigger multiple cameras and flashes for one reason or another uh, using the multi-flash plus. So uh, right now I'd like to go over some software updates I've done for the uh, multi-flash plus. The uh, newest version is still in beta because I haven't fully tested all of the interactions yet, but uh, it seems pretty robust in the testing I've done so far, so uh, I'll be posting a link to it in the uh, show notes for this, and uh, definitely go and uh, check that out. You'll need an FTDI cable to uh, reprogram the multi-flash. Uh, there's a port in the back right there where you plug in the, the FTDI cable, and then it's pretty easy. It uses the Adreno software to uh, load the uh, new uh, firmware onto this device. But uh, so first off, I fixed a few bugs. Uh, the first was that uh, the pre-focus, which you use to reduce shutter lag usually, was not working with the Multi-Flash Plus after the first trigger. So basically... Uh, Prefocus would work once and then it wouldn't work again so people were having to enter and exit the menu and it was kind of annoying so I fixed that bug. Um, another issue was that uh, some cameras require that you uh, trigger both the focus and the shutter uh, lines when triggering a camera and if prefocus was not set before then that wasn't always happening so uh, that was another issue, and I fixed that. Uh, I also reorganized the stru structure of the software quite a bit to reduce lag, so that's an optimization I added to the Multi-Flash Plus. We're not talking about a huge improvement here. Um, it's something like 20 to 30 
uh, microsecond improvement in, in the lag, which is, is good, but uh, not, you know, noticeable in most use cases. Uh, and the last change was a bit bigger than the others. Uh, so when you go to um, the, when you're in the menu system, there's this option for pre-focusing. And basically what that does is that uh, tie, if you have that set to yes, that means that the camera is effectively uh, in a mode where the shutter button is, is halfway down like that at all times. And the reason to do that is because it reduces uh, shutter lag uh, and makes it much more predictable. So if you want to have a pretty consistent uh, photograph where you're trying to sync cameras and flashes with the multi-flash plus, uh, you usually want to set pre-focus to yes. Uh, it does not impact flashes, so if you're using flashes, this, this is pretty much just ignored. But for cameras, it, it can make a big difference. And uh, the problem is, whenever you have cameras in pre-focus mode, nothing was showing up on the LCD screen. It's just a way uh, that uh, cameras work today. So what we do now when pre-focus mode is set to yes is uh, for... Uh, four seconds and that's controllable via a variable in the software but it's not in the menus because I found four seconds pretty much works everywhere but if somebody wants to change it uh, back to zero or so it works like it was before or if they want to increase it or decrease it uh, to any amount of time you can do that by recompiling the software which is pretty easy thing but uh, Basically, now, instead of just automatically going into pre-focus mode all the time, it will actually exit pre-focus mode for four seconds after the shot, and uh, that will give it time to display a preview of the image so you can sort of see how your shot turned out without turning off the, the camera X. Before, you had to um, hit activate um, to sort of get it into the mode, take your picture, and then exit, and then it would show your preview. Now it will show your preview without touching anything on the multi-flash plus. So that's a pretty nice feature and I'm really happy that um, the community uh, sort of suggested it because it's something that uh, I think is going to be useful to a lot of people. And it's actually something I'd, I'd like some comments on, uh, on whether that's something I should move to the, the camera axe because this is uh, the same issue uh, exists on the camera axe and I didn't want to update every all the software at the same time so the camera axe still works that way where you don't get a preview of your images but um, I definitely could change it to uh, show previews like the multi-flash um, software now does so I think that's all of the software changes I've made since the uh, initial release uh, you know, I mean, the way things are connected for this case that I've, I've sort of wired up here is that the uh, camera is connected to port one. Um, this uh, triggering system here, uh, the, the uh, camera trigger is connected into the input. And now if I just activate the system, prefocus is turned on right now. Um, so before you would not get any kind of display or preview of the image after it was taken, but now you can see if I take it, the image preview does show up, um, which is really nice. And you can sort of hear that beep. Uh, that basically is telling me that the uh, <clears throat> the the camera is back into pre-focus mode and it's ready to take another shot. Let me just show you. There, that beep tells me it's it's back in pre-focus mode. So if you take two shots without waiting for that beep, the second one is basically, you know, just going to uh, not be pre-focused. So the, the shutter lag is going to be larger on that second one. But as long as you're doing, you know, five seconds between each photo, uh, there won't be an issue at all. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.